The art form of professional wrestling is predetermined. It's scripted. In some sense, it's not real. But this might be the most legitimately dangerous move in all of pro wrestling. It's called the Gonzo Bomb, and it was invented by accident in the middle of a match by a man with a broken arm. Think of the Gonzo Bomb as a demonic love child between a power bomb and a pile driver. It starts off a lot like a power bomb, but instead of the opponent tucking inward and landing on the mat with their upper back, they're driven headfirst straight down into the canvas with really no ability to protect themselves. The kind of spinal compression that a move like the Gonzo Bomb promotes has led to a lot of real-life incidents of paralysis in pro wrestling matches, including life-changing injuries for the likes of Steve Austin, Masahiro Chono, and more. Unfortunately, repeated cervical spine compression has even contributed to the death of wrestlers, including the man who took the very first Gonzo Bomb. The popular origins of this move, which is also called the Kawada Driver, the Triple Crown Bomb, and the Vertical Drop Power Bomb, can be found in All Japan Pro Wrestling in the 90s. January of 1999, to be specific, in a Triple Crown Championship match between Toshiaki Kawada and Mitsuharu Misawa. This match is as hard-hitting and brutal as you would expect from two of AJPW's Four Pillars of Heaven during this time period. We are, after all, talking about All Japan Pro Wrestling in the 1990s. King's Road style. That means the more you face the same opponent, the more intense the fights get, the more devastating the moves have to be, and the harder it is to put that opponent down for a three count. Under the King's Road philosophy, the longer a rivalry goes on, the more intense the matches get. And by 1999, Misawa and Kawada had been rivals for a very long time. In fact, some people have even called Misawa Kawada the greatest rivalry in pro wrestling history. Their wars in the ring had by this time already become legendary, and this incident would only add to the mythos surrounding their matches. We could sit here and talk about All Japan in the 90s, Misawa, Kawada, King's Road style for hours, but let's get back to the Gonzo Bomb. Partway through this match, after giving Misawa a huge spinning back fist, Kawada breaks a bone in his forearm. Now, this is Toshiaki Kawada we're talking about, Dangerous K. He barely even registers the damage and keeps wrestling. It's a situation very reminiscent of Brian Danielson breaking his own arm in a main event match against Kazuchika Okada at Forbidden Door earlier this year. Although the incidents are more than 20 years apart, both Danielson and Kawada wrestled a good 15-20 minutes with a broken wing, and both of them ended up winning the match. About 15 minutes after breaking that bone in his forearm, Kawada gets Misawa in position to deliver a power bomb. Misawa falls forward while still being held by Kawada, as if he's going to counter the power bomb with a Frankensteiner, a move he used regularly. The story goes that Kawada, working with literally a broken arm and exhausted from the match, just did not have the strength left to lift Misawa for a powerbomb. So he keeps holding on and makes a few more attempts to jerk Misawa up into position, but it just doesn't happen. And then, after a very tense few seconds, Kawada just spikes Misawa straight down, right on top of his head. Not on his shoulder, not on his back, but directly on the top of his skull. The play-by-play -play commentator is screaming, the crowd is in shock, and Kawada manages to go for a pin. Incredibly, Misawa kicks out. Because after all, this was a complete accident, and not the planned finish of the match. About two minutes later, Kawada would drop Misawa on his head again, this time with a much more standard brain buster. He'd go for the count and win the match.
An interesting side note here is this would be the last match that All Japan Pro Wrestling founder Shohei Giant Baba would ever see. He watched it from a hospital bed while being treated for colon cancer, and apparently said it was the finest wrestling match he'd ever seen. Baba would die just nine days later. Being a move with so much real-life risk associated with it, Kawada would only ever use the Gonzo Bomb three times. The first being the initial accidental use against Misawa in 1999, the second being against Keiji Muto three years later, and a third in 2005 against Misawa once again, this time in a pro wrestling Noah ring in front of some 60,000 odd people in the Tokyo Dome. It would end up being their last match against each other before Misawa's death four years later. Oddly enough, despite being a move with such an aura of dread surrounding it, the Gonzo Bomb never actually won a match. Now, as with so many moves that have this kind of infamous mystique surrounding them, there are disputes as to who actually did the Gonzo Bomb first. For example, some people will say that 1980s Joshi pro wrestler Jumbo Hori was the one who originated the move. Others say that Rick Rude accidentally gave the first Gonzo Bomb to Ultimate Warrior in the WWE. At this point, pretty much anybody who botched a pile driver or a power bomb back in the day has been accused of originating the Gonzo Bomb. According to pro wrestling historian and broadcaster Chris Charlton, the name Gonzo Bomb in Japanese literally means originator bomb, possibly referring to the work of Carl Gotch or Luthez. And speaking of alternate names, some of you might remember this move being called the Hangman DDT in video games like WWF No Mercy for the N64. And of course, there are wrestlers that have come after Kawada who have paid tribute to the move, like Brody King with his Gonzo Bomb, different spelling there, or even AJ Styles with his Hollow Point. But these are homages, being modified, safer versions of the original Gonzo Bomb. They often have the opponent tucking in and taking the move on their upper back at the last second, like when Taichi gave Hiroshi Tanahashi a Gonzo Bomb in New Japan Pro Wrestling a few years ago. It was a clear tribute to Taichi's mentor Kawada, but a much safer version. But whoever you think did it first, and whatever you want to call it, nobody executed the Gonzo Bomb quite like Toshiaki Kawada. It may have started off as a complete and total accident, one that Misawa was frankly lucky to walk away from, but there's a reason Kawada's version has gone down in history as one of the most infamous pro wrestling moves of all time. 